So, as you may know, on April 24th, 2020, a man named Josh Swain decided to jokingly make a Facebook group, where he then invited everyone that he could find that had the same name as him. The meaning was simple. In exactly one year's time, on April 24th, 2021, at noon, at a specific set of coordinates in the American Midwest, they would battle to see who was the Joshest Swain of them all. The winner keeps their title, while all others who lose the fight or forfeit by non-entry must change their names. One Josh left the chat before the challenge was even issued, but the plan was already made. The original Josh Swain posted the screenshot to Twitter, not knowing exactly what he was setting in motion. Those of you alive in 2021 may have the broad idea of what would happen the following year. Others will tell you bits and pieces of the fantastic event that was to follow, but I am here today to give you the inside story that you never even knew you didn't know. Through mere chance and a little bit of healthy meddling, I found myself at the center of one of the largest events of internet culture in the last decade. I'm talking lone wolf investigation, insider interviews, property theft, national news coverage, this is the full, definitive story of what happened at the Josh Swain fight of 2021. On April 14th, 2021, I was in my normal routine. In between classes, scrolling through social media, On April 14th, 2021, I was in my normal routine. In between classes, scrolling through social media, just looking for a laugh. I came across a post that seemed familiar. It was a screen cap of the original Josh fight invitation, something I had seen floating around in the last year or so. Except this time, someone had bothered to put the GPS coordinates in Google Maps and show the location alongside it. The coordinates led to a small field alongside Northwest 56th Street in Lincoln, Nebraska. This took me by surprise, because I was only living about 30 minutes away, just southwest in the town of Crete. I got excited. Hey, here's an internet happening that I can reasonably attend. I went to check to see if I was busy on the 24th and met some mild disappointment. For some background information, I am what is known as a forensic speaker. If you were ever in high school speech, it's like that, except for college and universities. If you weren't, let me explain. I promise this will tie in later. Forensics is a public speaking competition where students will research and write various programs of oral presentation and interpretation, giving essentially 10 minute TED Talks on issues of social significance. Schools will host tournaments where competitors are judged in one of various categories, like informative, poetry, persuasive, or prose, and are ranked based on their presentation style, skill, diction, and topic choice. Every year, national tournaments are held to see which of the nation's speakers are the best. Nebraska actually happens to be a competitive hotspot for the activity, with enough schools that we can regularly do weekend tournaments for most of the year. One of these national tournaments is called Interstate Oratory. Each state in the U.S. is allowed to send their two best representatives, who will compete with persuasive speeches to see who is the best in the nation. There's a long history dating back to the 1800s and a lot of prestige to this thing you've probably never heard about, but the long and the short of it is, I was going to be competing in an online version of Interstate Oratory for the state of Nebraska on the 23rd and 24th of April. I was dismayed. Would I really miss this once-in-a-lifetime brawl for some stupid speech competition? I begged my coaches to let me try, and we checked the schedule. There was a slight chance I could go if the timing of the rounds and my placements worked out, but with that promise of a chance in hand, I decided to press forward in my investigation of the fight. On April 17th, while my lady friend was busy with finals, I decided to head into Lincoln to go see a movie by myself. I decided to leave a few hours early so I could go ahead and scout out the location and see if I could maybe find the genuine Josh Swain in the surrounding area. Coming from I-80, I decided I would head in from the north through a new suburban development. As I winded through the copy-paste back streets, I came to my first problem. There was a ton of construction blocking the north entrance to the road, apparently for some new high school. I checked Google Maps for another entrance and saw that I could come across the road from the south side instead. As I made my way out of suburbia, I shit you not, I saw an Among Us themed birthday party. I lost my shit, didn't get a picture, and kept going. Going back across I-80, I came to a loosely paved road and a medium-sized farmstead. When I got there, I pulled in and there were a bunch of big red barns and buildings with this red brick house out front. I parked my Mustang and went to the doorbell. After maybe 10 minutes, an older gentleman, maybe 70, came outside to greet me. That was when the second problem arose. 
I told him I was looking for a Josh Swain, and he told me that he didn't even know anyone with that name. That set off all sorts of alarms in my brain, and not the kind that should have been going off from me being this lanky college student in a stranger's field where no one had known where I was going. After a brief talk, I gave him some warning that a bunch of people might show up to his house randomly on the 24th, and took my leave to go puzzle this out for myself. Well, first I saw Godzilla vs. Kong, and then I went home. Awesome movie, 9 out of 10. Monkey. I decided the best course of action was to see if anyone had ideas of what to do. I went on Reddit. Yes, I know, sue me. Desperate times call for desperate measures. It's not like I was going to get much help anywhere else. There, I found not one, but two different subreddits dedicated to this fight. On r slash Josh Swain, I made this post. Scout of the location, slight problem, need immediate clarification. A day later, to my surprise, there was a response. Someone important had responded. Someone very important had responded. Former President Barack- Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Josh Swain, the original poster, OG Josh Swain, had commented. He had never intended for this to get out of hand, and was looking for someone from the area to help sort things out and move the location. He personal messaged me his contact info, and I realized I was getting myself right at the center of this emerging situation. Now, Josh had given me his phone number, so I texted him to see if it was the real deal. And oh, was he the genuine article. We quickly started discussing over text possible locations for the fight to be moved to, when I came across possibly the funniest thing I could do. I called my speech coaches and asked them right away if there was any chance that we could host the fight here, on my home campus and semi-public park, Doan University. That was immediately shot down. However, the nearby Tuxedo Park of Crete seemed like a much more realistic option. If I could get the fight moved there, not only would it save me gas on a drive to Lincoln, but it would also be close enough to reasonably see the fight during interstate oratory. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be so. My excellent persuasion skills that got me into this predicament somehow failed to bring Josh to see my side of things. Instead, we tossed around several other locations nearby. Branched Oak State Park was a bit too pricey with a $6 to $8 entry pass fee, but Josh had found another place called Air Park Green Area. Essentially, it was this giant open field with a few roads running through, with plenty of nearby space for large gatherings. I pointed out that there was also Bowling Lake Park right nearby, and Josh started calling around to get reservations for what he called a family reunion. With that sorted, I went back to my original Reddit post and made an edit. Update! Thanks for the gold, kind strange. <clears throat> oh. Excuse me. Hello, everyone change of plans. Now, I'll take the blame for this next part. I misunderstood our conversation as saying that we would be hosting the event at Bowling Lake, but Josh had reserved Air Park. So yeah, my bad. We figured it was close enough that people would figure it out, but the wrong information was circulating anyways. It was about this time that I mentioned to Josh why I really had wanted to get a hold of him. To find out the truth about the event and maybe, just maybe, even make the video you're watching right now. Aha! Gotcha! Trapped. Entrapment. This is not legal. He thought the idea was cool, agreed to an online interview, and it sounded a little something like this. Alright, let's start off nice and simple. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where you're from? What do you do? What's your social security number? Give us an idea of who you are. My name is Josh Swain. Uh, you probably gathered that by now. Um, oh, you don't say. Yeah, about um, last year, around this time, I'd say, uh, I was in the midst of the pandemic, um, pretty bored had been in my house for probably a month um i go to the i go to the university of arizona i'm from tucson i'm originally from phoenix but i guess do you want me to take it back to like how it started uh yeah give us an idea of how you uh came up with this idea i, I honestly couldn't tell you how like i originally came up with the idea i just i've always like seen people who had my username or or my um like handle on twitter or something like that and always look super jealous of them and i make stupid jokes on twitter all the time like i just decided to see who i knew named josh swain like on facebook and just add them all to group chat and thought i could see what happens when i had the idea just to 
implement a plan to be the ultimate Josh, uh, hopefully. But um, that's just where I am right now. You know, I didn't expect much uh, more complicated things than that, and it didn't. You've matched expectations. I actually just finished um, like a final presentation for one of my um, one of my classes. So, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll still I'll still I'm still working around uh, making it to Nebraska. So, ah, uh, yes, finals week. Tell me about it. So you're a co- you're a mm-hmm. college student, right? All right? What you what you studying? Uh, I am a civil engineering major. Hey, I'm mechanical. Really? Or, or, do you, or do you have beef? Do you have beef with um, civil engineers? Or no, I don't have any beef with civil engineers. It's just hey, engineer. I mm-hmm. saw a post you had sent out earlier on Reddit, and as far as you know, no other other Josh Swains that you invited are coming. That that is correct. So um, from the original group chat, I messaged um, like that. I, I was going. I sent my flight plan. And only two people have read it. Um, I can actually pull that up now. And um, it looks like one person just read it and one person said that they wish they had the time and money to, to go out there. So just from what I understand, I, that doesn't look good. But um, somebody on the Lincoln subreddit mentioned that there is a Josh Swain in Lincoln um, as well as a Josh Swain in Omaha. Now if they're... 65 or something like that who knows or not or off the grid from the internet and just have a name in the phone book who knows but mm-hmm. you know maybe we'll see somebody but as of right now i have no confirmation that it's going to be anybody other than me in the off chance that there is any sort of challenge that shows up what have you been doing for the last year to train for this uh i am a runner I probably run 15 um 10 to 15 miles a week mm-hmm. um and so and so that has built up my endurance that I think will really keep me going in the long game um, during the later stages of the so fight. Your as well as, um, I, I just keep keep them moving, you know, dodge, bob, and weave, you know, how, uh, like, like Rocky, how he needs to. In the beginning, you didn't plan to come out here, but about when did it sink in that people were really starting to take an interest in the fight and that you probably should come out here? No, yeah, that was like when right at like because. I've never had it to be kind of like that, and I've never had any form of attention like that at the beginning. Um, but so I was just kind of like, oh man, like maybe people will remember this, or like maybe like I'll have to do something, um, or maybe just people will forget because you know, internet like has a has like ADHD, I guess, and just kind of jumps around between thing and thing. But you know, when it was like, when it was like. February and somebody sent me a screenshot and it was like only two months away. I was like, Oh my God, I have, I guess I have to go. Like I can't not go to this. Right. Yeah. It's one of those. Oh shit moments. But no, yeah. I I like the corners were entirely random. I don't have family there and nothing like that. I'm not from there. Have Um, you ever been to Nebraska on before? I I have not. I don't believe I might have driven through it because um, I have family in um, Kansas and so I, and so I've driven from Arizona and Minnesota because I've lived, I used to live in Minnesota and I might have switched through, um, Nebraska, but no, I, I've never been to Lincoln. Do you have any, um, do you have any recommendations for food or anything like that? Uh, I think, uh, there's a good place in town called Honest Abe's. So have you heard of mm-hmm. an app called iFunny? Oh, of course. Yeah. iFunny. Do you have an iFunny account? I, I do not. I don't. Ah, you're missing right. out. As far, have you seen anything floating around about like local news stations getting a hold of this? So okay, so actually, I just so I reposted or excuse me, cross posted the post to Lincoln, the the r slash Lincoln, mm-hmm. and somebody commented like that said Channel Eight will be there, and we're sending a reporter whose name is also Josh. So, uh, <laughs> fantastic. So, so if I get so if I get to duel with a uh, a Channel Eight news reporter, that'll be that'll be a blast. And one final question. This is a joke one. You don't really have to answer it. But what's your opinion okay. on the state of Israel? Oh, yeah. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> In the week before, I was busy practicing my performance, but managed to keep track of the growing hype surrounding the event. Someone from the Lincoln area, user Phoenix32, had beaten me to the punch of a sign redirecting the flow of traffic to Bowling Lake. 
Josh had also made a big clarifying post on r slash Josh Swain Battle, establishing a food drive, the lack of physical violence to be seen at the event, who hits, etc. A charity fund for a local hospital, and an official stream by u slash Nithril or Cripple underscore X. Weird name. Following this, a correction was made to the site on the palette, and the correct information started circulating. With the clarification that there would be no physical fighting at the event, rather, Josh's of all names would be extend the invitation for a pool noodle battle. The chatter surrounding the event was heightening, memes were flowing, social media was going, and at the center of it all, a singular man named Josh Swain was attempting to redirect the force of the internet into, hopefully, a non-destructive blow on the northwest part of Lincoln, Nebraska. Then, on Friday, April 23rd, I woke up and checked my Snapchat to see a truly unbelievable sight. Quite frankly, I was dumbfounded when I saw it. I sat there for a good solid minutes in my pajama clothes, thinking, no. No. There's no way. Th there's no way. My freshman year roommate and three of his friends, some of the lovely, lovely apes, Alpha Pi Epsilon of Doan University, had stolen the palette from the original coordinates and taken it to the basement of the ape party house before posting about it on their Snapchat stories. You can't make this up. While others online had either not noticed or just assumed that the utility company had taken the sign, I texted my roommate to see what the hell they had done. He told me that they were surprised no one else had done it before them, which of course is probably the most frat response he could have given. I asked if they were going to put it back before the fight, but I think we all knew that wasn't going to happen. I contemplated putting out another sign, but didn't have the time, and by then either someone else would or people would figure it out. I had more important matters to attend to. That Friday, I went and rocked the first three preliminary rounds of oratory, before finishing around seven and going to hang out with my friends at a local bar. While playing some cards with the guys, I eagerly listened in on a Zoom call. You see, there were two rounds of semifinals that were going to take place on the 24th. Flight A at 10 a.m. and Flight B at noon. If I was going to see the Josh fight in person, I needed to either make the first flight of semifinals at 10, or not make them at all. While holding my breath and my cards in hand, I waited for the names to be called. Well, good news. I made semifinals, reserving my spot as one of the top 12 public speakers in the nation. Bad news. I was in flight B, the noon flight, meaning I was going to miss the fight. I begged my friends to go in my stead, but they were either all busy or Beaker, who couldn't be fucked to do anything fun if he was anything less than sober. Devastated, I consigned myself to my fate. I had tried so hard, and got so far, and in the end, it didn't even matter. I felt like the Red Skull in that one Infinity War meme. Guiding others to a treasure I cannot possess. The night passed, and the dawn of the last day was upon us. The first rule of Josh Swain Fight Club is, you tell absolutely everyone you know about Josh Swain Fight Club. At around 10 in the morning, the first people were really starting to show up to Air Park. Josh and his crew of volunteers from the Lincoln area were setting up the food drive location, and had set out signs redirecting people to the area. Within an hour, things started getting packed. They initially expected 50, maybe 100 people to come, and in any other case, that might have been true. But this was an internationally hyped event, on a Saturday, right next to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where bored final season's college students were waiting for something to do. 50 became 100, 100 became 200, and 200 people became somewhere between 500 and 2,000 spectators at the site of the battle. Note, those are unofficial second-hand estimates that Josh told me. I wasn't there to count. People were in outfits and costumes with signs and pool noodles ready to go. There were Spider Joshes, Gladiator Joshes, Luke Sky Joshes, Gilly Suit Joshes, Furry Joshes, Big Joshes, Little Joshes, Joshes with main protagonist energy. It was getting intense at Russellswania. Enough so that the police arrived and arrested everyone. Nah, I'm just joshing ya. The police were actually pretty chill about it. Also on the scene were multiple news crews. The local 1011 news stations, Channel 8, the Journal Star newspaper, even Fox News had a blurb about it during their daily broadcast. And of course, multiple streams were online at this point. Unnotably, Fawcett, a YouTuber who tends to get into all sort of crazy events, had driven across the country and brought a drywall plaque to dedicate to the event, which he had given to Josh Swain afterwards. 
His stream at one point reached over 45,000 viewers on YouTube and would be viewed nearly 800,000 times in the week after fight, netting him over 10,000 subscribers, by my own estimates. The problem was, with so many people in a part of Lincoln that was not intended to be supporting this level of internet activity, the internet connection went to shit real fast. Anyone not there, like myself, was resigned to watching broken and laggy streams during the majority of the actual event, only getting the real experience through live feeds and uploaded footage after the fact. Air Park was located right outside of the Lincoln Airport, just far enough away that drones were a possibility. One of the attendees, aptly named Big Josh, had received clearance from air tower control to fly a drone in the area. When asked, they said, quote, Hell yeah, have fun. But enough set up. It's time to get on to the main event. The main reason that everyone had arrived was to see who would take home the title of Josh Swain. But until this point, there had only seemed to be one Josh Swain, the original Josh Swain, who would arrive at the location. But if I had a nickel for every time a man named Josh Swain came to the Air Park Green area in Lincoln, Nebraska to fight to keep his name, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The Josh Swain of Omaha, Nebraska, arrived on the scene as the only other Josh Swain to defend his honor. What's more, from what the OG Josh told me, Omaha's Swain may have very well been the Josh Swain in the original screenshot who left before the challenge was even issued. That's insane. Or in Swain, rather. He didn't even need to stick around to hear the challenge, he just knew, and was the only one with the balls or the ability to show up and dance. Dressed in black sunglasses, black jeans, black bandana, spiked vest and a sleeveless shirt, he was here to attend to some business a year in the making. And business would be settled in an epic game of rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so without further ado, Josh Wayne, would you please join me? Well, home turf advantage be damned, Arizona's Josh Swain got to fight to keep his name, and Nebraska's Josh was now Josh Slain. But this wasn't the end of the day. Far from it. Beyond the two Josh Swains, or, well, only one now, there were 75 to 100 other people in attendance, all named Josh. And they were strapped. The pool noodle fights were set to begin with just a few practice bouts to set the mood and the rules. The crowd settled back into a ring, giving the space needed for the carnage that was going to ensue.
fight raged on for a century. Many lives were claimed, but eventually the champions stood. The rest saw the better. Little Josh in a bloodstained sweater. Yes, the victor of this fight was four-year-old Josh Vincent Jr., crowned by a fellow child with a Burger King hat, a championship belt, and hoisted in the air to the enjoyment of everyone present. All in all, it was a pretty good day. After that, things winded down. Fawcett had every Josh in attendance sign his drywall plaque before dedicating it to Josh Swain and giving it to him for safekeeping. With Josh Swain unable to take it back on the flight to Arizona, the plaque is currently in the works to be donated to the Nebraska History Museum. Unfortunately, I talked to my roommate and they're not gonna give back the pallet. They're just gonna keep it. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. Why do they need a pallet? After the fight, people slowly leaked from attendance until about 5 o'clock when everyone had left the field. Now, it was about this time that I had finished my competition, unfortunately not making finals, and I texted Josh to see what was up, as we had planned to meet in the evening to hang out. Yeah, I'm cool, I'm hip, I know people, I hang out with Josh Lane. We decided to go to a local burger place in the main hub of Lincoln called Honest Abe's. After scratching the front of my Mustang on a cement in a parking garage, ironically, me and Beaker were the ones that met up with Josh and some of the volunteers at Honest Abe's. I had sent an invite to Fawcett through Reddit to join us, but some miscommunication meant that he missed the details. Yeah, sorry Fawcett, maybe next time? Tell me how selling the dirt from that fight site goes. Josh and co relayed the day's event, telling me all about the wild stuff that had happened. More people arrived, recognizing Josh, asking for autographs and pictures, and it was really just good fun. Half the time, Josh was just busy responding to messages from journalists who were asking for interviews or comments. I think Fox News actually wanted him to come on air. As the night went on, eventually I did have to leave. But not before the whole group got one big picture at the table. You know, for memory's sake. By the way, I'm black, if you couldn't tell. The day's events, and the stories behind it, quickly spread across the internet. News outlets and YouTube channels across the world scrambled to upload footage and cover the events, and more notably, the benefits that had been brought as a result. Josh had organized an online fund to change the losing Josh's names, which was actually clickbait. It was a donation linked to the Lincoln Children's Hospital and Medical Center, which raised over $10,000 by midnight on the first day, and would go on to reach $14,355 donated, well past the $1,000 goal. Coincidentally, according to Josh Vinson Sr., the father of Little Josh, Little Josh had previously had issues with seizures when he was two years old, and had received treatment at the same hospital. According to Josh Sr., for Josh Jr., this was not only an inadvertent chance to give back to the hospital that has helped him through that, but also a day he would remember for the rest of his life. Little Josh received fan art, an Instagram page, and now has a GoFundMe for his college fund, which is a bit much to be riding off of this one event, but you know what, I'm not going to stop yet. But it doesn't stop there either. The food drive, organized by Reddit user Yu Katzimudzchin, or Betsy, had amassed four carloads full of food to be donated to a local kitchen. While sources online said over 200 pounds, Betsy texted me and said that they donated a literal ton of food. Everyone was in awe. What had originally started as a joke had morphed into a re-emerging meme, then a potential trespassing complaint, then a small gathering, and then a massive international event that brought together even more people than the Area 51 raid, with donations and merchandise and memories to match. All thanks to meme magic, a year of lockdowns, and one Josh and his small crew of supporters. Yeah, you're welcome. So yeah, I think that's about the end of this story. Will there be a second fight? A second event? Maybe even with different names? Well, I mean, we obviously talked about it amongst ourselves. People were open to the idea, and plenty of copycats are now staking their claims for the next bout with a new name, but in my opinion, I think we call it quits here. Everyone had their fun. The logistics would be a nightmare, and it's better for all of us if we just treasure the memories made on that one crazy day in the spring of 2021. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get going and edit this video, because I'm currently in a race against Internet Historian to see who will get one out faster. If I'm already too late, I'm sorry, it's dead week. I'm freaking out. But hey, if you liked the video, now's the time where I plug myself. Subscribe, or whatever. Join my Discord, even. I'm looking for playtesters for a new card game, if you're interested in that shit. If you do digital art, we're looking to commission people, too. We hang out occasionally. Thank you, Josh Swain, for helping me help you to help me make this help me help you to help me make this help the event happen and this video happen. 
best of luck to all involved, and as always, freak out. <laughs>